Hello and welcome to another indie game review video here on the YouTube channel for the sanitarium.fm. I'm the British Cyborg and today I'll be reviewing a little game called Light Apprentice. Now Light Apprentice is what's described as a comic game book which kind of means that this is a game that's done in a sort of comic book style as in this is how the story is told. There are two parts to the game. There's the comic book storytelling side of it in which you can make some decisions about how you choose to approach certain situations and then there's also the adventure mode where you explore the environment around you clicking on things to interact with them, see what the characters say and try and figure out your way forward. And it's also the place where most of the battles in the game are triggered from although some of them do actually trigger during the comic book sections as well. Now the game was published and developed by the same studio that is Amazing Media and what I'm actually playing is actually Light Apprentice Volume 1, which means there's four chapters of this and there's going to be further volumes coming up with, I assume, more chapters. The story of The Light Apprentice actually originally begins many years before this game actually starts and you have the five titular apprentices, The Light Apprentice being Nate, who is the first one we meet, and these five people have been given powers by the planet in order to help maintain the environment against uh, the oncoming war in which one nature-living country is being being threatened by a supposed evil empire. Now this particular war took place over 300 years before this game starts and when Nate the Light Apprentice is revived by Tlob who is the first character we meet and a blue ling wizard we found out that uh, the war actually happened and the planet is on a fast track to environmental destruction. So Tlob and a group of others have actually been seeking out the rest of the apprentices in order to try and revive them and basically go for their last dish effort to try and save the planet which is slowly dying. And from that description you might be able to guess that this game does actually have quite a strong environmental message and basically deals with the consequences of letting greed take priority over protecting the planet for the future. You know, the consequences of quick profit over long term health and all that sort of thing. Some might find this a little bit heavy handed. I however do not because, as I say, it does actually talk about consequences of actions but not just bad actions but it also talks about acting out for good and good consequences and everything and this is actually emphasized in the game's battle system. I did note that there are battles in this game but you have two options. You can choose to engage with your enemies and attack them and basically deplete their HP to win or you can choose to defend and when an enemy attacks you when you are defending and you actually manage to get the ring timing right then you will stun them. That is, once you've actually depleted all their endurance points. Certain enemies have more endurance points than others, but once you've managed to knock off all the endurance points, then the enemy will be stunned for three turns, which will actually let you be able to forgive the enemy if you want to complete a pacifist, or if you want to choose to attack them, it'll do twice the amount of usual damage. For the sake of this recording, I did actually choose to mostly go pacifist, although I did actually film a little bit of attack at the beginning just to show you what it kind of looks like. How you choose to end battles will also have a little bit of an effect on the direction the story takes. Speech rules will be different, images will sometimes be different and in some cases you can actually affect which way the story goes. The chief way of interacting and input in this game is simply by clicking. Now this game is actually a mobile port game but it honestly makes use of the limited way you could input things into a mobile game very well. The adventure mode part of the game, which is the bit that you're going to use to explore most, is, to be honest, it's kind of like your typical point-and-click adventure. You're in an environment, you click on things, and if it's clickable, there'll be interactions, you can pick up items to change those interactions and progress further on in the story. Battle is done through, once again, choosing what you want to do, and the way to land an attack and also to defend is to basically try and time the ring mini game right. If you time it right then if you're attacking you will land a solid blow and if you are defending then you will actually be able to knock off one of their endurance points. You also have some special abilities like for example Tlob's heal in which you can use and each character has their one signature ability which won't 
take up their entire turn, but other moves will do. Now you can use those special moves by using up some of the store of the team's spirit points. Spirit points will actually refill every single time you attack or you are attacked, which means that basically you're probably not going to run out unless you're spamming your abilities, and most of the time you probably don't need to spam your abilities. There's also items that you can find, both in the form of potions, which you can use during battle and during the adventure mode to do various things, such as cure poison, restore HP etc and there's also equipable things that you can find usually armor helmets weapons and then even though I haven't found one yet there are actually three ring slots so I'm assuming they're for rings or baubles so how did I find this game well I hopefully by now you can tell that I actually really like this game as I said I think it did excellently with the limited amount of input it could get the story is quite compelling and you know I feel connected to the characters I want to know what happened basically 300 years ago before the war started all five of the apprentices who were the hope for the planet they all vanished Nate is revived and has no idea what happened, so he's gone off on this quest with Slob to find the rest of the apprentices so they can A, save the world, and B, find out what happened. And of course, each apprentice has their own different powers. As I said, Nate is the light apprentice, and the next one we're going to be meeting is the fire apprentice in chapter 3. So yeah, as the game progresses, you get new characters who have new abilities, new strengths, and there's the RPG element to it, which I absolutely love, because I like RPGs a lot. The game currently isn't actually out, so it will be out soon as an early access game, uh, releasing on March the 16th. We have an early access review code, so thank you very much, Amazing Media. Do appreciate it very much. And to be honest, I would recommend you go and give this game a look. It really is very good. I did enjoy it, and as I said, this is just volume one. There's a lot more story to come, and I can't wait for it. And so, that does it for another indie game review here on the Sanitarium.fm YouTube channel. I'm the Predictor Cyborg, and I've been reviewing Light Apprentice by Amazing Media. Remember, stay tuned to this YouTube channel for more news, reviews, and more of the same. Find us on our website at www.sanitarium.fm for radio shows and articles, and join us in the Discord if you just want to chat. I'm the Predictor Cyborg, and I will see you for the next one.